YouTube, it's Alexander here, and today I'm going to show you what I believe is the easiest and most reliable way to make $1 million. Now bear in mind, this is not financial advice, this is just what I would do if I were trying to make a $1 million. Now there's only two things you have to do to make a $1 million in my opinion. Number one, you have to have a job. Number two, you have to save money, and that's it. So this, I'm going to show you how to do this, and this is going to be based off a Monte Carlo simulation. And basically what that does is, is it runs random iterations of um, different scenarios. So for example, it takes into account you know, potential um, down markets like to 2008, 2009 financial crisis, and it also takes into account potential good years. It kind of has all scenarios built into it. So to start off, I'm going to say that uh, the average uh, investor starts investing when they're about 23 maybe just graduated college and are ready to start the workforce. Now, I'm going to be pretty conservative here, and I'm going to say that the average person um, coming out of college has about $2,000 in savings, and uh, that's where this initial investment is going to be. So if you start when you're age 23 and put $2,000 in the market is kind of the um, what, what we're going to start with here. So next, um, we're going to look at what return you should expect on that investment. Now, I'm using 11.4% because since 1928, the stock market has had an average return of 11.4%. Now bear in mind, the future stock market returns could uh, vastly vary. Historic returns are not indicative of future returns, but this is just kind of what it has been for the last 90 years, so this is what I'm using. If you believe it will be less than this, you can lower it. And I'm using 19.7% as a standard deviation, uh, as that is also the standard deviation of the stock market since 1928. Um, bear in mind when I'm saying start market, I'm saying the S&P 500, which is the 500 largest companies in the United States. And this is very easy to buy. You can literally go on any, um, to any broker and buy an ETF called the SPY. And SPY has 500, um, the 500 largest companies in America in it. Um, next, I'm going to say how long um, are you going to have that money invested? And I'm going to say 21 years for this example. So if you start out of college at 23, you will have, um, or I expect to have a million dollars by the time I'm 44. Um, and then how much to invest annually. Now I'm saying um, I'm going to invest annually about $10,000. And this is kind of based off the assumption that the average college graduate um, makes between forty dollars and $50,000 for their first job. So I'm going to say if you're making $40,000, you're saving 25% of your income. If you're making $50,000, you're saving 20% of your income. And this can obviously um, change based off how much money you're making and how much uh, you're willing to save. But for me, I'm going to try to save $10,000 a year. And then this is going to be the growth rate of this amount to be saved annually. Now, average. Uh, sorry. Now, obviously, if you're working, you expect to get salary increases. So I'm saying your average salary increase will be six percent. This is not a random number. I chose this because I would expect my initial salary to be doubled by the time I'm around forty or forty-four. So basically, if you start out working and you make forty thousand dollars a year, I expect you to be making double that in about twenty twenty-five years. If you make fifty thousand, I expect you to be making double that, about a hundred thousand in forty to fifty years. And then, of course, there is inflation, so that kind of ruins the growth a little bit, but there is inflation. 3.1%, again, is the average inflation rate we have had since 1928. Now, bear in mind, inflation rates have gone down a lot, so this could be potentially an overestimate, but for now, I'm just using historic returns. So, using this scenario, invest 2000 expect 11.4% return, 21 years until retirement, and invest 10000 annually. I would, I would have a 50% chance of retiring with $1 million. Simple as that. And kind of, um, I'll show you what this kind of looks like. Down here, it shows you random lifetimes, okay? So it actually, I actually simulated 1,000 lifetimes. So in lifetime number one, I would end with 720,000 or 719,000. Lifetime number two, I'd end with 1.3 million, 500,000, 700,000, 1.5 million and on and on and on. Many different scenarios. You can see some of them, some lifetimes I would do quite well. I'd make 3.5 million, other times not so lucky, 390,000. So it basically just runs all kinds of different scenarios. Um, and I came up with a list here on the right and it shows me percentile chances. So I have a 50% chance of um, having a million dollars by the time I'm 44. But let's say it was a really bad economic time uh, in the bottom 10% of the time, I would make 
only 548,000. Whereas in the top 10% of the time, I would actually make $2 million. Now bear in mind, this is nominal return. If we do account for inflation, that's gonna be the number on the right, okay? So based off these scenarios, I have a 50% chance of retiring with a million dollars. Now, let's say I don't wanna retire when I'm 44. That seems a bit young. Let's say I wanna retire when I'm 60. So if I'm 23 when I wanna retire when I'm 60, that would be in 37 years. So I would do this for 37 years now. Now, if I did this for 37 years, all you have to do is you change one of these numbers and everything else updates, okay? So now we have all new times of lifetimes and the numbers change. So if I worked until I was 60, using these same assumptions, I would actually average um, $6.4 million when I retire. But bear in mind, inflation, the longer you live, the more inflation matters. So in, not, in real return, that's only $2 million. But in straight cash, that is $6.4 million. So if I retire when I'm 60, I have a 50% chance of retiring with $6.4 million. In the bottom 10% of the time, I'll have 2.6. And in the top 10% of the time, I'll actually have almost $18 million. Now, I understand investing $10,000 is kind of a bit you know, optimistic. I mean, that's a lot of money. So let's say you invest a lot less. Let's say you only invest 5,000, half that amount. Now, even if you're making not 40,000, let's say you're making $30,000 a year, you know, that's only one sixth of your income. You can definitely, hopefully, um, still save that amount. So even if you're only investing half of that, you're still gonna average um, $3 million by the time you retire at 60, okay? And then again, 5,000, that's optimistic, maybe still. Let's say you're gonna be really bad. Let's say you only save $2,000 a year. I mean, even if you're making $20,000, that's only 10% of your income. Um, I think everybody should be able to save, hopefully, at least $2,000 a year. And if you save $2,000 a year, remember the iterations run, you would still expect to have $1.3 million. So it doesn't take much. You know, you start off investing 2,000, you invest 2,000 a year. If you do it every year consistently, and every time you put that money in the S&P 500, I expect myself to have $1.3 million by the time I'm 60. So this can seem a bit boring. It is the stock market. It's not Bitcoin. It's not going up 100% a day, but you do get more consistent returns here. So that about wraps this up. I'm going to link this document in the description so you can fiddle around with that. If you think this inflation rate is too high, you can change it. If you think the growth rate is too high, you can change it. You can change the amount to invest annually. Basically, you just change the columns here and these things will all update. This will all update and all the random scenarios will update uh, under it. And on the right for reference, if you think stocks are too dangerous for you, you could change these returns to returns of bonds and standard deviation bonds or if you want zero risk investment, basically you can do T-bills on the side here. And just actually wanted to make one last point down here at the bottom, just to kind of prove the stock market. Um, even if, let's say you're gonna retire at 65 here now, okay, not 60. So you start at 23, you retire at 65. Even if you had chose the absolute worst 42 years of America, 1928 to 1970. So think about that. 1928 is right before the Great Recession. Things were terrible during the Great Recession, okay? So even if you chose the worst time to invest, you would have still made 23 times your investment. So if you had invested $1,000, you would have ended with $23,000 by 1970. And then the best case scenario, if you had started investing in 1957 and you ended in 1999, right when the bubble, you know, the dot-com bubble, right before it popped, you would have made 155 times your investment. So basically, so far, this has always worked. Bear in mind, again, historic returns do not are not indicative of future returns, but it has worked out very well for every American that has lived so far, and I hope and do think it will continue to, to do so. So yes, that about wraps it up. Let me know if you have any questions in the comment section, and again, I will link this video below. I hope you enjoyed.